see you at all from here. Um, but I'm assuming that there are more than a couple dozen people, so I'm really glad you guys are here. There's a lot of people here tonight that I know have been here in years past, so I'm really happy about that too. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Keenan Stump. I um, am one of the people that helped to create this event a few years ago, and we've gotten this great response. Just making fun of kids with like, no, 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 that's not what we do. Uh, we're making fun of you guys. <laughs> uh, I, I asked to come out tonight, I've never done this in years past, but I asked to come out tonight because I wanted to introduce our next performer. Uh, she means the world to me. So the next performer, Elizabeth. Um, I had known her for a little while. She was on the board with Camp and Courage. You know, we'd always kind of cross paths, uh, but never really spent time around each other. And then as soon as I got to spend time with her, working on a research project, she turned out to be the smartest person that I know. <laughs> um, we always said from year one, one of the things we talked about as these parents worked four months with local comedians, um, spending time up at night doing basically creative writing. You know, they have these stories and then they have to change the order of them and figure out how to phrase them and where to pause and how to position their body. As we spent all this time together those first few years, we always had the same thing happen in the last rehearsal where we had a really funny conversation where we would say, uh, what if your child with autism grew up and then told a whole comedy set about you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we have tonight. It's Elizabeth Burson. I want to tell one more funny story, uh, just because <laughs> it cemented the idea in my head. I remember, remember working on that uh, research project together. She was helping to write a chapter for a textbook for occupational therapy students so that they would know how to work with people who are on the autism spectrum. And the, the, the book kind of gave a little pushback. They're like, well, wait a minute, who is this person? Like, they, they actually have autism. Like, he, she could probably tell you a lot more than like we could. I don't know. I know what the research is. She has way more input. Uh, we were meeting for those uh, pre-writing, organizing a chapter times, and uh, after the first meeting, she was really funny, I said, uh, in the parking lot, I said, uh, what would you think about coming up and uh, talking a bunch of shit about your parents? <laughs> Evie is very literal. <laughs> so the word shit didn't work so well, but what I said was, if you can come up uh, and, and tell jokes, you know, tell funny family stories. I think people would really like to hear that, and we've always wanted someone that's brave enough, courageous enough to do that. In the parking lot, she said, so you want me to just go up and talk about all the weird things that neurotypicals do? <laughs> yes, yeah, of course, actually, yeah, definitely. You, you don't even have to talk about your parents if you don't want to. I'm trying to sell her on this, by the way, at this point. You don't have to talk about your parents. You can just, like, share the weird stuff that neurotypicals do or whatever. You know, just, are, you, are you interested? How, how long is it? Uh, I don't know, it's like, you know, seven to 10. Sometimes the audience takes a really long time to get their drinks, so it cuts down on the overall time. Um, and she thought about it for maybe 0.5 of a second. She said, could I, could I have the whole three hours? <laughs> It is my pleasure.
to introduce you to, um, without hyperbole, one of, maybe my best friend in the last five years that I've ever met. I'm so lucky to know her. To her friends, she's EB, so don't call her that right away. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth Borsa. Between the driver and passenger seat. Oh. Break the volume. 
you to drown out the car radio. <laughs> By the end of its life, that radio had a mind of its own. Not unlike my father at Halloween. He had a full gorilla costume, complete with feet covers, gloves, and a mask that covered his whole head. He liked to answer the door. <laughs> Kids would say, trick or treat. And depending on their age, Dad, known year-round as the Candyman, might choose to give them a treat, or he might choose to hear a trick, which meant they had to perform to earn their candy. <laughs> Teenagers frequently sang the Barney song on our porch. <laughs> Talk about positive reinforcement. <laughs> the Halloween after my youngest brother was no longer in diapers, Dad changed it up. Little girls got candy, older girls got diapers. I know you parents are panicking. Don't worry, they were clean. <laughs> Dad said they would come in handy for babysitting. And as he liked to say, you have to make your own fun. I have a lot of fun memories with Dad and some not so fun memories. See, both my parents wanted me to drive. In time, I became a proficient driver, mostly practicing with Dad. Mom would get tense and yell more. <laughs> Neurotypicals do that sometimes, you know. They think it helps. <laughs> I'm a safe driver with a good record, except the time I was involved in a hit and run with a pedestrian. <laughs> I was startled, but I did as they taught me. I brought the name and number of a pedestrian and a witness home to show my concerned parents. <laughs> Imagine their pride and relief upon hearing that a pedestrian on drugs sprinted out of the bushes and hit my stationary car at a red light trying to run from the scene. <laughs>
<laughs> Mom's goal was to get him to his room, one step closer to the mouth guard that would protect his teeth in our ears. <laughs> one afternoon, I hear this. Matt, the police are here. They're looking for you. Go hide in your room. <laughs> he rises, his eyes white. And in five long seconds of processing, he darts off to hide and sleep in his room. <laughs> General consensus is, Mom won that round. <laughs> it wasn't her only winning round. My sister and I spent our high school years doing homework in the basement while watching horror films. One evening after Saw and Calculus, we came upstairs. <laughs> because the lights were acting up. They wouldn't stay on more than a few seconds. We couldn't find mom, dad wasn't home, so we called the closest relative, Aunt Sarah, number 12 of 14. Just left, 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 right, straight, 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 left, left, away. <laughs> and she quickly drove over. As soon as she pulled into the driveway, Mom walks out of the bushes, laughs about scaring us with the lights, and tells us we aren't supposed to bother people at night. <laughs> she made us apologize for disturbing Aunt Sarah. <laughs> Reflecting on this, I feel like Mom's behavior was more disturbing than ours. <laughs> As is typical with neurotypicals. <laughs> the one whose behavior analysis is wrong. <laughs> this one time in the gorilla suit, my father just I mean, he was the coolest adult at the Halloween parade. He inspired a new Mission Trail Elementary School policy. Adults may not wear face masks. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> As I saw my parents do things, I have learned to emulate them in adulthood. Well, except the gorilla suit. <laughs> Although every Halloween in college, I did dress up as a Dementor, sit quietly in the dorm <laughs> elevator with the lights off and scare drunk freshmen. <laughs> no idea what inspired that. <laughs> as, as a kid, I remember going to work with Dad. Once we went to the courthouse, Right, left, straight, 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 right, five streets, and then a left. <laughs> to bail an employee out of jail. This turned out to be a handy skill for me when I ended up at a super fun wedding and had to bail someone out of jail in the middle of rural Kansas without any real adults to call. <laughs> real adults teach you how to do things. Although for me, there were some things they probably should have taught that they didn't. Because even if they demonstrated it to me, unless it was explicitly stated, they didn't teach it and I didn't know it. <laughs> For example, did you know that ground beef is spaghetti sauce meat, is taco meat, is meatloaf meat, is chili meat, is sloppy <laughs> joe meat, is lasagna meat, is hamburger meat? <laughs> but not ham. <laughs> <laughs> I made a list of some things other parents might want to tell their kids, so take note. <laughs> there are approximately 27 different words for shirt, but they all mean different things. <laughs> Tee, cami, blouse, jersey, turtleneck, v-neck, tunic, tank top, halter top, polo hoodie, vest, sweater, sweater vest, jacket, and the list goes on. <laughs> when somebody gets engaged, Always ask to see the ring. Don't forget the three second rule. <laughs> Don't eat the brownies in college. Yeah! 